Hey, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm here with my good friend, Jose Abad. Jose, thank you for being here. And thank you for inviting me. I'm so glad you're here. Jose does a variety of things for me and for other people here in Vilcabamba and around. And I'm going to let him talk about what he does for a business here. Jose, go right ahead. Tell everybody what you do. Thank you. Well, uh, welcome to my friends, Joe Canal. I'm so nice uh, meeting interesting people like you. Well, f uh, first of all, I'm from Loja, Loja, Ecuador, so close from Vilcabamba. But I moved to Vilcabamba around 30 years ago, and now Vilcabamba is my hometown, my village, because for the weather, the tranquility, uh, you know, everything is a mix of things who makes everybody feel happy and home here in Vilcabamba. And Muy tranquilo here in Vilcabamba. Yes, that's completely true. That's why if you want to come and visit Vilcabamba, you will be welcome and you will feel this beautiful environment in Vilcabamba. Yeah, and that's really true. Uh, it, and Jose really helps make you feel welcome and, uh, and make you feel like you have a friend on the ground here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I have different uh, kind of contacts for different uh, help that the mainly foreigners will need. And uh, my son, Pablo, and me uh, both uh, speak, uh, well, some foreigners said we speak quite good English and we are totally open to help everybody in different things. For example, we take people to shoppings in Loja or doing paperwork when the people uh, buy lands, uh, uh, vehicles in general. We have uh, friends uh, for help with all these paperwork and this trauma for make easier, especially because when the foreigners come here, they don't know the rules and they don't know the tricks. You know, these kind of things, we are totally open to help everybody with this kind of help or support from a local um, here in Vilcabamba. Yeah, I remember when Lisa and I, we had to get our migratory movement documents. And so Jose took us to Loja, took us to the right building and uh, helped facilitate that process. And you go to the building you get a piece of paper from them and then you have to go to a certain bank. Jose waits out front of the bank so we can get that paid and get back over to the migratory movement office and uh, then make that process happen. Every time you have to pay for something here, you usually have to go to a bank and then get a receipt and then take it back to the office. So Jose, facilitate that and make that really painless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I hear from different people, um, it's a pain, a pain, you know, in the neck or whatever, but uh, because they are in a different culture, different language, and that's why it makes, oh, for them it's like, ooh, so big. But because I'm from here, it's so common, this kind of uh, paperwork or this, this kind of things, it's easy. And plus my knowledge, I know because I'm from Loja, I know my city, I know where I have to go. And like you notice or you remember, looks like everything was so easy. Yes, makes life much easier. So Jose has a, has a taxi and his son also has a taxi. They have their own taxi and so... Um, you pick people up from the airports, yeah? Yes, I'm so blessed in that. Thanks for the language. A lot of people call me and they ask me go and pick them up at uh, the closer airport in Catamayo. But I used to do uh, recently on the January 2nd, I picked up a young lady called Mia um, from Guaya uh, Cuenca Airport. From the Cuenca. And you picked us up from the Cuenca Airport one time too. Uh, yeah. uh, the first time that you came. Oh, well, no, 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 yeah. that's when we brought my mother-in-law. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of people who I'm picking from the airport, that's why sometimes I, I'm a little uh, confused. Yeah, but uh, and I used to do or pick, pick up people from Guayaquil Airport too. And uh, in the past, I used to pick them up uh, early, early or late at night and drive back immediately to Vilcabamba. But now, you know, it's some um, difficulties on the road, on the uh, thieves. It's better spend the night and then the next day leave from Guayaquil to Vilcabamba early. Just a little tips uh, for avoid whatever inconvenient yeah. in traveling from Guayaquil 
eh, tu loja. So, why Aquil to Bilcabamba is 10 hours, roughly? Uh, depend. There are some, some, some things to think about. Is for, for example, the weather and the traffic. Mm. But it's around seven, eight hours. Seven, eight from hours. From Guayaquil to Vilcabamba. Yeah, pretty good trip. Yes, because yeah. the, the view is spectacular from the sea level to the high in the mountains, like Vilcabamba. So that trip you go to the Cajas National Park, sí. which is quite interesting. Yep. And yeah. if you are lucky, even you may see just on the road, the wild llamas. The wild llamas. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and again, thanks for the language. Um, uh, some people ask me, pick them up at Guayaquil, uh, sorry, at Quito Airport. At Quito Airport. Yeah. And then slowly we visit different cities in the north and coming back to Vilcabamba. We took uh, this tour, took like two, uh, almost two weeks. Two weeks, wow. Yeah, but it was amazing. A long trip. Yeah, yeah. But so the, the, you take everyone sightseeing then along the way back. Yeah, exactly. Town to town. Mm -hmm. Did you go to Baños? It was almost the last stop. Ah, from, yeah. from Baños, we uh, drove early in the morning to Cuenca, and then it ends the, the tour. But before we visit uh, Mindo, is is the Amazon. Oh, but it's, yeah. it's almost um, in the middle to the Amazon and the highland. Wow, it's wow. beautiful place. And then we visit the uh, Lasso. We visit the uh, other um, cities in the north too. And we climb, well, we went to the um, Kilotoa Lake. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Did you go to Otavalo or no? No, no, because it, it was more north. That's too far north, uh, yeah. From Quito to south. So Quito south. Yeah, but it was this, these places was beautiful, and these people were so happy uh, because they was, the, for one of them, was the first time in Ecuador, and she enjoyed a lot. Oh, I bet. Jose makes the trip a lot of fun because he jokes a lot. We, he at least he and I joke a lot. We we went to uh, Machala with Jose one time, and all the way back in the middle of the night, we joked all the way back to Loja. My wife was in the back seat trying to sleep, <laughs> but uh, he was laughing too much, and she was upset with us for we, for laugh too much in the way back. <laughs> and you know uh, the city of Banos, uh, Jose is talking about taking these people there. It's a really neat place. It um, has all these hot springs and it has waterfalls everywhere. And uh, what is that one called? The, the Devil's... Uh, the Devil's um, Fry or Devil's um, the Pylon del Diablo is big, big pond, Devil's. The Devil's Pond, yeah. Big, but this big one. Big pond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's really cool. Everybody likes to go walk through those waterfalls and check that out. It's a great place to visit. And Jose can take you there. Yeah. If uh, you come to visit Ecuador and if we put in contact, we'll be perfect. And then we may enjoy. Enjoy this the trip. a beautiful country. So, Jose, um, can you tell me other types of things? Now, I know you've done some other things for us. Like um, you took us appliance shopping. We went and bought a television in Loja. You took me to a store to do that. And... Um, and so things like that, people can contact you? Exactly, yes. Uh, everybody uh, may contact me for when they need to do different uh, shoppings or uh, paperwork, because I know the my city, Loja, and um, I know how to do different things or where I, I may get this thing. You, you know, when paperwork too, I know where is different kind of offices for go and visit and do the whatever tramit that the, the foreigners need to do. And when I got my own vehicle, Jose took me to get a new windshield put in and, uh, and we went to a, a mechanic in Loja that he really likes and had my car worked on there. And, and any time that you want to eat ceviche in Loja, <laughs> this is your man. He will go with you to eat ceviche. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in Loja, we are quite close to the beach and we may get fresh seafood. And what is the place you took us to, Criollo, Peru? A Peru Criollo. Peru Criollo. Yeah. Nice. Nice restaurant, yeah. And they had the Peruvian Cusqueño beer. 
Peruvian Cus Cusqueña yeah. Beer, ¿ya? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, eh, Loja has a lot of eh, things to enjoy and offers almost everything because it's a, it's a big city, but not too big. Yes. That means it has everything that the, the foreigners need to do for enjoy the life here in Vilcabamba. We've said in, in other videos that we have a movie theater in Loja and very often they'll play some English speaking movies there. Um, and they uh, we have a wonderful place there called Boyaca. Really nice department store, a lot of different things in Boyaca. And of course, Super Maxi, and you take a lot of people to Super Maxi, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, uh, this kind of malls are closer to the mall that is so common for you in other countries. Yeah. That's why the like some some foreigners used to say one stop shopping. One stop shopping, yeah. And Granite Key is um, is like a a giant uh, grocery store with a lot of you know housewares and things in there too. So you know you have a couple of choices in Loja to where to go shop, as well as you know the Mercados, um, the Central Mercado, and then the Grand Colombia Mercado, uh, what they call the Mayorista. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we have a new outdoor market called Puerto Seco. Oh, Puerto Seco, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's in the bypass uh, uh, to Cuenca. It means a dry port. Mm -hmm. Dry yeah. port, yeah. And it's, uh, it's interesting when the people come from the countryside to sell the, pro the products. And it's so interesting because you may have this relation directly with the producer and the buyer. That's correct. And then... Uh, thanks for that uh, too. You may get good prices. Yes, I, I buy apples by the case there, and uh, we peel these apples and use them for apple pies that we bake for some of the restaurants in Vilcabamba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for example, now we are in the mango season, and for a bucket uh, like 80, 90 uh, big mangoes like this size is $15. Yeah, I think I got a case of real big ones for $12. And uh, man, they were great, and we made mango pie. <laughs> yeah, you didn't yeah. get any of that, did you? Yes, I we well, did. You did get even, some. even that's why I know the price too. <laughs> <laughs> and still, we are having at home, and we are enjoying a lot. Making a smoothie, oh well, or just milkshake. Man mango milkshake is so good with this kind of mango. I drink uh, mango juice probably three or four times a week. It's just uh, so good. My body craves mango all the time. <laughs> There's something yes. about mango that gives you the minerals and things you need. Mm -hmm. And especially when the the season, it, it is like the body knows that the season and we have to eat this fruit. Yes, yes. And, and we have we have mangoes here on the property, but um, our best mango tree died for some reason. So we still have to buy mangoes because the we our mangoes start coming in. Right about the end of January, where everybody else is are starting to almost go out at the end of January into February, because mm -hmm. um, we're so much colder up here. Exactly, yeah. Here is less cold, and the coasts where are the main mango production start early, and but it last for some time. But now, now is the Edward mango season. Oh, it's time, and it's easy to find this delicious mango. Lots of good mangoes. So, um, Jose's family is all here in um, in Vilcabamba. He has a son and a daughter and grandbabies. How many grandbabies do you have now? Three. Three grandbabies. Two granddaughters and one grandson. Oh, how about that? That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And uh, his lovely wife, she's uh, such a sweetie. I, I hope you'll get to meet Jose's wife, too. She's She is a nice lady. And so, um, if you're in Vilcabamba, I want you to look this guy up because he's going to help you get to where you need to go as well as make great suggestions for you. If I have a question or I'm not sure where to get something or where to do something, this is my number one guy to call. And what we're going to do is in the description box below the video, I'm going to have all of Jose's contact information, WhatsApp, Telegram, um, phone number, and his email. So you'll be able to get a hold of him, even if he doesn't want you to. You get a hold of him. <laughs> well, don't worry. If you call me, text me, or email me, I will answer. And, and he is that way. If in the middle of the night, if I were to have a problem, need to go to the hospital, 
Jose would be there. He's like the ambulance driver, mm -hmm. and uh, he would take me to the hospital. And even uh, in luckily and sadly, I did that some t some times ago. And a lot of people, a lot of my friends, I save their life because because we get on time at the hospital. Other ones don't make it, but you know, at least I did my best. I was there when they need me. Yeah, Vilcabamba is uh, close enough to Loja. We're within that golden hour that they talk about. Um, we're about 40, 45 minutes away. Um, if I'm driving, maybe 35 minutes. <laughs> but um, so, uh, you know, we're close enough that um, usually you can get to the hospital on time, no matter how bad it is. Um, sometimes that's not the case. So um, one of the things about people who die here in Ecuador, there is a process and Jose can help you with things like death certificates and uh, get that all arranged with the um, with the embassy, et cetera, because uh, it's a different process here. And Jose can help you through that process. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, uh, uh, for example, a lot of people are giving to me a swear declaration. It's like a kind of power attorney uh, for, and they authorize me what I have to do with the body. Mm -hmm. After they die, I take care Uh, call the, the the funeral people, they come and take care of the body and then I keep the ashes or give to the family whatever the people when he's alive sign this swear contract. Yeah, this is a hard thing to talk about, but we are a community of aging expats here, um, a lot of retired expats, so um, these things happen and we need to have uh, preparations made and so Jose is very good about helping in that process. So hope you don't have to go through it, but someday we all do. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets out alive. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, but uh, you know, uh, it's like you said, it's quite sad to talk about that, but at the end makes so easy once this person is resting. That's correct. Well, okay, Jose, I'm gonna ask everybody to give you a call. And, and reach out to this man if you think you're going to come to Vilcabamba. He can pick you up at the airport if you make that arrangement with him. He will be there for sure. And he'll uh, take care of your luggage, get everything where it needs to be. And, um, you know, if you need help with, with a hotel or something like that, he can help in that area too. Because you know everybody. Well, not everybody, but let's see, like 99%. 99%. Okay. <laughs> There's like three people out there he doesn't know. <laughs> you? doesn't know you yet and that's, right. <laughs> that's why <laughs> yeah but uh, soon but soon we will. <laughs> jose thanks again for being here buddy Appreciate thanks it. to you too mucho gracias okay listen if you haven't already thumbs up to the video subscribe we appreciate so much you're watching and we appreciate all your comments see you next time see you <laughs>